Hey, hey, Isaiah. What's up, Gary? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. How, so I, so how is your uh, how is your New Year so far? My New Year is, is inspired and um, very very optimistic. Inspired and optimistic. How about yeah, you? we're having we're having all kinds of uh, coincidences or not so coincidences of all kinds of things. I mean, I was woken up to um, to uh, somebody whispering in my ear, not really metaphorically, in my right ear only. It woke me up at 6 a.m. And then then it said, uh, it was it was a man vendor who's a Scorpio, and it says, I'm coming to you. And then I'm like, what the heck was that? It was in one ear, right? It was, and I, and I, and I, I wasn't really asleep. I was just out on the getting upside. Yeah. Then I go in and sit down on uh, the Nano V before I we went to the beach. And Tracy comes in and says, hey, my, uh, my sister, um, she, uh, she channels a little bit. She watched the live and she was asking where you were, watched the live and she has a message for you. And then I said, what's your sister's birthday? It's my mom's birthday. My mom is the whole reason this mission started. Like it was, it was, so it's my, my mom's astrology, same birthday, everything. Right. And I'm like, I'm so the Scorpio from the other side says you have a Leo gonna gonna speak to you it's in the right ear only it's in this world that was that's how i woke up today that's super cool yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah now what he told me to do was basically go into the jungle which we're gonna do in those uh those those domes yep. that they are where the cenotes are said i had to do a couple of rituals urinate on the ground and uh a couple other things and i'm like it was very, very specific. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to this. Because normally people call me and they, or they'll send a message saying, hey, you should do this. Or I'm channeling this. And I, for the most part, I get that like 20 times Locked. a day, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So this one was so specific because I had the whisper in my ear. So that's how I started off. That's what's up. And there must be something, there must be something like happening with like divine messaging right now. Because my girlfriend yesterday, Day, like two days ago woke up middle of the night and was like curling and then there was like a whole message involved with something that happened like three days prior for an opportunity in regards to curling and it was like you're talking and i remember I was curling like, like yeah yeah like men yes. with brooms curling yes. yeah a lot of the world might not even know what that is yeah. you gotta be a kind of a canadian to yeah. know what that is or yeah. an american and, and it was crazy crazy because i went curling in high school like two times and i was thinking about it earlier in the and she was like she literally got, got up, was like curling, da, da 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 went back to sleep. And I was like, what? So how did you and process then, it? Like, what's your, like, when you get that kind of uh, clue, how do you uh, process it? Um, so there's two things. It's what is the relevant experience already? So like, what what already have I experienced in regards to that? Because Because for me, it was something I've never done. Curling is fun. It's a game. You know, you're literally sliding a stone all the way down and you have teammates that are trying to like lead you. Um, and then it was also like the connect, the power of connections and returning back to things that were enjoyable that you didn't really give yourself permission to. So yeah, so that that part of the message for me was about my inner child. And the other one was, uh, you know, like, like, it's like one, it's a repeating message I get, which is you know, out of, bring your bring your thoughts, get out of your thoughts and get into your heart, like move down your heart. And I'm like, I'm in my damn heart. What do yeah, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Quit yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm, so I, uh, so, so I get it. But the one uh, theme of it was my inner child. And, and, and the funny thing was at the end of it, um, they said, when you do this, you're going to appear like a wild man. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So what is, Cause, cause, what is it about your inner child? Um, it's just playing, having fun, you know, yeah. doing things without expectation. Like you don't have to be good at something the first time you do it. If you've never done something, you can't have an expectation of how you're supposed to be able to do it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. So a lot of people have never done curling. So if they go, yeah. curling, you can't, I, I, and, and it's awkward. Cause you're in that like split stance. You feel like you're about to like rip your hamstrings apart. Cause you're so far spread apart. You know what I mean? Like, but it's like, know that you have the flexibility and the ability to play once you give yourself permission. Yeah. So also uh, there, there's a target to hit and there's a uh, sweeping the path yeah. clear. Those are some other 
things. Yeah, and and just teamwork because it's like the person throwing the thing can only do so much. Now he has to leave it to other people to do their job <laughs> to, you know what I mean? Make it faster, make it slower, you know? So it's it's like throw the it's like throw the stone and let it go and let the universe and teammates and people like help you help you hit your target. Yeah. Yeah. So I I've been um uh serendipitously um I I know my body was was trying to force a spiritual message. So one of the things was is it put me in a spot where where I I, I needed to fast or it was the best option yeah. to fast. Um and um i was like when i'm when i'm transiting or there's big changes like full moons i used to fast three days at every full moon because if i didn't fast i'd be vomiting food and i was gonna dry heave and vomit anyways even if there wasn't food there so so i so i literally used to I, so I, I realized in 20, uh, 2020 about the summertime after doing this for maybe like eight or nine months i realized that i was gonna i was de detoxing and every full moon i would I would vomit and I would go for three days, no food, no water. So, so I just sort of said, okay, well, I know it's coming. So I'm just going to not eat anything because it's, because it's easier if nothing's coming yeah, up. Yeah. Right. And it would, for three days, it would like squeeze everything out of me. I wouldn't urinate. Um, I uh, wouldn't urinate, wouldn't defecate and just vomit for three days, every full moon. And this happened until, um, probably, um, about a year ago. And then, you know, I've had a couple, I I've had one moment since then, I think. And, um, and so I'm, I'm, um, just finishing day three, moving into day four of, of my fast. Yeah. So, cause whenever I have anything that's not okay in my body, the first two things is I fast and, and I create, I increase my urine therapy from like once in the morning to like four or five times in the day. And, and it's, it's weird because I stay, I never get sick. I yeah. stay, or sorry, I never get to the detox point. Never. It's not sick. Uh, I don't get to the detox point where I'm like broken down. I'm always functional and just kind of waving like on the edge. Like when you first feel like you're going to get a flu or a cold, but you, it, but it never changes. It just stays there yeah. for a couple of days. And uh, so that's what I've been doing. I've been fasting and I got a lot of mucus that was breaking up in here. My, my head's changing. Yep. My shoulders are changing. My face is changing. Um, so today I'd like to see if we give some of the breath work can open this up. I got a cool. little bit of stuff. Yep. In this. Awesome. Cool. So before we start, um, I want to do this thing I saw from uh, Tony Robbins. And basically, it's the power of the mind and how powerful we are. And we don't really realize if we intentionally go beyond our own existence, what really happens, you know, so the first thing that we're going to do is just like an observational thing where we're going to put our finger up and then we're going to do a complete twist as far back as we can. So what it's going to look like is you're just going to put your finger up and now you're trying to twist your hand and your, your, your body stays the same. You're trying to twist as far as you can over and see where see as far as you can go and just do it one time. So bring your finger up, point okay. it up, look at it. And then the whole time, stay focused, looking at your finger and try to do a complete circle all the way around. And then remember where you are and then unwind. Well, that was pretty easy. I get right, went right to the pole here. Okay. So I got about, I got about um, three quarters of the way. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do, we're going to just stand straight up. Yeah. So now we're going to stand, stand straight up. Now I want you to visualize yourself picking your hand up. So just imagine yourself picking your hand up and then visualize yourself going way further. Okay. 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 So, so just pretend like you're literally picking your hand up. Okay. Take a couple of deep breaths, breathe into it. One more. I'll pick your hand, hand up again, but now you're just going to breathe into your finger and imagine. So don't do it yet, but just breathe into your hand. So just keep it right here. And then same thing, visualize yourself going way further. Okay. 
Now open your eyes again, look at it. Now this time, I want you to imagine there's a prize if you get further. So imagine there's some fun prize if you get further than the first time. And go all the way. Let's see where you go. I got further. But I, I got to say that I, I understand the premise of the movement exercise. Yeah. And um, so this is a, something that we do when we do eye balancing and stuff like this for people and they get greater range mm -hmm. of motion. Um, mm -hmm. I'm at almost my peak. So the difference between the two is this, but to put it in perspective, you know, where I was, was, you know, like I, I, I'm bringing my hand almost to, to right yeah. here. There's a gap this much from, so I'm already twisting a yeah. lot, but, but when people, um, occupy their mind like that and focus on a goal or an intent, this is how we used to train Olympic runners to work. Um, because, you know, working with Olympic athletes for the years that we did, all of our athletes have a medal. And I found something really unique. It's very different than other athletes because they train for four years to be good what? for 30 oh, seconds or for three minutes. And whereas other athletes, they train to be good over an average period of time. So it's very, very different in the, in the mental discipline because they, they don't have a redo. <laughs> and and I and they, those techniques that Anthony Robbins is talking about, um, those are those are really those are strong because once you engage your brain, what it does is uh, and you visualize something, then you take away the the resistance. But that resistance was there because you didn't think you could do it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I'm really really into that. That's super cool. Yeah. So it's I, a blast from my past. Yeah. And that's why that's why it's like. Once again, you don't know how powerful something is until you practice it or, you know, exercise it. And that's why the first time I did it, I was like, how is that possible? I tried so hard the first time. And then the second time you're a way bigger gap, no matter how much of a gap. It's like, I literally thought that was my maximum. And then next time it's like, how? Okay, you want to try, you want to try something yep. really cool then? Okay, go to your, go like this, go all the way to your maximum. Okay. And then take your eyes and look all the way back to your left. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, like force them to the left. And as you force them to the left, that maximum strain is going to drop and then move ahead further. Now I just did it further. Oh yeah. So what, what I know that they, I, I know the exercise. So what I know that they don't know, and this is what fashion news is based on is that it's all about perception and safety. And when you look the other way, um, you're actually taking all the fascia in the head and you're moving it the opposite way, which is part of the restriction. And that's, that's yeah. why. Yeah, so here's something you can do when you try it. Uh, we haven't released this stuff yet, but I'll just show you anyways. So if you're doing um, totally twisted like this, right? Go ahead and try to do totally twisted. Get in that pose. Now take your eyes, whichever direction you're facing and turn it the other way. Notice that your body wants to rotate more. Yeah. Okay. Now turn it other way up to the top corner. Body rotates more. Other way up to the bottom corner. And the body wants to naturally rotate more. And, yeah. And that's because the, the body, what we've learned is the body's in three zones. One, two, and three. Whatever happens here has a reciprocal yeah. action yeah. here and there. And so the, the eyes control a lot of the internal fascial pressure. And when we, when we, uh, we use our eyes to create um, more internal release of the dura matter of the brain, of the internal uh, meridians, etc. cetera. It's so interesting. Yeah, because isn't that wild? It's, like, it's almost like, like um, it's like imagine, imagine, Imagine how our reality would shift if we just visualized within ourselves, because now we're changing our internal perception of ourselves because we're not looking at anything. We're looking like within ourselves. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's the position of the eyes. I mean, uh, this and Anthony Robbins has a pretty good understanding of this. It's a neuro linguistic programming, yeah, yeah. right? So the the body's a fluid adaptive biological computing system. Uh, system. 
it uses position and orientation as part of, of understanding the world. So if I, like when I'm working with somebody on their eyes, um, I was working with, with Gail, Jason's mom, and she used to get beat like this with her eyes looking like this. So she like literally ritually beat, like abused, like, like insane. So when I did her eyes to that direction, it brought back 100% of the, the emotion and the memory. She went into shock. Because it's just the position in your body remembers exactly. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. It's like if you get a smell from, you know, your, your mom's cooking, yeah. then all of a sudden you remember, or you get a, you get a, a, a song that's on the radio from your uh, first date or yeah. something yeah. like that. Then all of a sudden, the, the all part of the sensory processing to have memory, the most important part, the one that dominates everything else, because memory is not here. This is the processing and the viewing of it. Memory is here. Yeah. And when we say to remember, it's, well, if I was to dismember, you would cut off all your limbs. Yeah. To remember is to take your limbs, yeah, take stuff from here, and a, a, a memory, push it to through an organ, anger, process it up to the brain with a narrative or a story. That's how we remember. Yeah. This is why, you know, it's what we're having a lot of people with dementia and, and, and Alzheimer's. By the way, Alzheimer's is just sta uh, stage three diabetes. Um, and, we, and what it is, is that the body can't remember. Can't put it back together. There's too much noise in the body, too much traffic. Yeah. And that's interesting that you said that because when I've worked with people in like an infrared sauna setting, it's like you get them flowing. Like, you know what I mean? Whatever was constricted, diabetes, it's, you know what I mean? Sugars, blood sugar. So now it's, if, the, it, if it has freedom, now they're like almost confused. Like, oh, I can. But because before their, their body was reacting from, wow. Like a yeah, we, we, a we have people uh, we have people reporting to us uh, complete reversal of symptoms and type one and type two diabetes all over the world. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's not what we've been told. It's yeah. a disease for sure, yeah. but it's not what we've been told for sure. That's wow. So what are we gonna do to open up my I got upper you. chest? A little bit of my head. All right, cool. So this one is gonna be. Um... There's going to be some movements, but it's going to be more sound focused. So oh, what I'm, perfect. So perfect. what I mean, so what I mean by that is, I'm going to say like, like the first one is going to be inhale. It's going to be ha, like H A. Then the yeah. second one is going to be A H. So when you inhale, it's going to be ha ha. Then the next one's going to be inhale ah ah. So basically we're going to play with like harmonics and sounds and and the the mirroring effect of those that's right. awesome right. do it so first one we're going to do six so it's going to be six ha ha's and then it's going to be the actually it's going to be like one h a one a h one h a one a h we're just going to go back and forth okay so just keep so breathing 12 total yep okay okay so just stand up tall put your hands on your hips and with the fingers like this, that thing? Uh, yeah, you can do that. Or you can just, you can just hold yourself. It doesn't, it's not a big focus today. Okay. Just like, just holding your, just so you feel your base, your roots. Okay. Okay. This is quick. But we'll be, we'll be real, real gentle today with the body. All right, here we go. First, first one, H-A, inhale through your nose. <sighs> Next one, A H. H A. A H. H A. Ah, uh, A H, ah, uh, H A, 
H. Uh, uh, H A. Uh, A H. Uh, two more H A. Ah, uh, A H. Ah, uh, <sighs> last one H A. Ah, uh, an A H. Ah, uh, uh, just shake it out, walk it out a little bit. See how you feel. I mean, I'm, I'm fasting, so that's something, but I feel like high, like, um, I mean, I feel high when I do this with you for whatever reason, but I, I feel like, like maybe I shouldn't be talking high. <laughs> All good. Yeah. I'm pretty good at talking when I shouldn't be talking though. <laughs> talking is an automatic thing, so I can do it even if I'm like, yeah. even if I'm shut down sleeping, I can get up and talk. Yeah, that's good. All right, so the next one we're going to do is, um, It's gonna be like a like you're imagine going up a hill and then like ah so it's just, so it's gonna be the same thing so imagine you're going up when you inhale and then it's gonna go ah okay, okay. and then it's gonna be the same thing ah so it's gonna be a h h a but just imagine like coming down that hill so you're when you exhale it's ah okay. I can feel it makes sense yeah okay so we're just gonna do three this time so we're gonna start h a here we go inhale tall a h h a H A Last one A H And then three big size of relief so imagine that same thing and then imagine you just uh, like uh, a big side here we go uh, uh, and just walk around a little bit You know, what's interesting is that is the same as, as that exercise you're doing before, because it's using the same process in the body, which is using a position and an orientation of movement and, and a vibration, which is movement. Yeah. And, and that triggers a response. So when we go, ah, like that, we know that we're letting go of emotions. Yeah. That's what yeah. the body does when it lets go of emotions. Yeah. And one thing that I kind of kind of like clicked for me is we were in Petco and there were squeaky toys and I was like, why do toys have the little squeaker? Like, what's the point of that? <laughs> and then I was like, well, animals, if you were to bite an animal, they're going to make a reaction. <laughs> You're right. So, so that's like the, that's like the way of simulating, right? An yeah. animal. I creating. never thought of that. That's a good idea. I thought it was just to annoy the owner. Yeah. <laughs> well, me too and then i was like and then i was like well what, why a, a animal wouldn't do it if it didn't have relevance to real life yeah yeah you're you're exactly right yeah because they're gonna act in nature yeah uh -oh. that is that's a that's an interesting observation yeah yeah so that's that, that was kind of how I, I reached that and i was like well what does and then what do humans do to make a sound that makes them feel better a sigh of relief every person at some point in their life might have been stressed and went 
Yeah, you get a lot of people that um that you can hear them there all day long, and either their body is completely out of energy and and broken down. Yeah. Or they're process they're not processing their emotions. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So now we're gonna do this. Go ahead. Caroline said, uh, "Yeah, the sound all stimulates the entire brain." Which. Is... Okay. So now we're gonna do the same thing, but now we're gonna add a little movement. Um, this next one is gonna be O H, O H, and H O. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Merry Christmas. And oh, um, and ho. Yep. Oh, and this time oh, we're, oh. we're going to go like this. So imagine, and then just like rub down your body. So it's going to be oh, oh, almost like a soothing, like you're trying to like, you're soothing yourself. You're like letting yourself a cooling sensation. Okay. Okay. We're going to do, we're gonna so do six. People, by the way. Say it again. This is one, of, this is one of the movements you do to increase belief and desire. Mm -hmm. So we'll start, we'll start here, we'll do three here, and then we'll do three right there, okay? And, and, and everybody listening, before we even start, say what you said again. This increases what? Belief and desire. These spatial Belief. zones, because um, this is the heart, mm -hmm. um, and anything that comes from the heart afterwards, and then it follows the stomach meridian down, and then processes against the large intestine, which is grief. So you're actually processing okay. down. So what I want everybody to do is either in the comments or in their minds, what is something you would like, like to believe about yourself? And as we do this, we're breathing it into existence. Perfect. Okay. okay. So we're going to do six and six, six here, six solar plex. Here we go. We're going to start H. We're going to start OH. Here we go. Ready in three, two, one. Inhale. Whoa. Oh. H-O. Oh. oh. Even bigger, even taller. Oh. H-O. Oh. 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 H O Now at the solar plexus, same thing, O H H O O H Oh. 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 Last one, each one, O oh. H. And H O, last one. Oh. Wiggle those fingers, wiggle those toes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely quite fighting in my mind. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like somebody just went shh to my internal organs and everything was just like I don't I don't think I've done well I had to have. I, I just I'm trying to remember if I've done breath work fasted but yeah. I must have because I fast all the time so yeah yeah but it, but I, I feel very different yeah. well even fasting because you're you're now your your energy systems are like do 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 like you, do you sleep when you fast? Because I don't. No. Um, 
the first day or two, I still, the first day I sleep normal. Second day, you know, maybe like four hours, but it's, it's half of it's just relaxation meditation. Yeah. And then the, the third day, um, I'd be lucky if it's uh, two hours. Normally when I'm on, like if I'm fasting 10 or 15 days, yeah. um, like last time I fasted 15 days, uh, I, for six days, I didn't sleep at all. No sleep at all. So I literally, what I would do is cause, uh, cause where we were in Lions Bay, I, I either had to make a choice. I'm going to be in the room or not be in the room because I make too much noise. So, so I, I just, uh, so everybody goes to bed and I'm like, okay, I take out my work stuff, take out the stuff I want to look at because I got, I got a solid eight to 10 hours a day that I didn't have before. Yeah. I get so much done. And the other thing too is what in the time it normally takes me to clear off a hundred messages. Cause I, I do hundreds of messages a day. So yeah. Yeah. So the time it takes me to clear off a hundred messages, I cleared off 300 yesterday. Same time, same time block. Cause yeah. I, I, I got yeah. this down. Like I yeah. know if I got, if I got a hundred messages, I know exactly how long it takes me. And what would you say? What would you say? Cause obviously it's your efficiency and your energy is much more like, like honed in. Yeah. Well, what, right. what would you say your, Obviously, you know the benefits of it. Some people have never fasted, have never, you know what I mean, stopped consuming. Well, they, because they, they still think food is a fuel, and it's not. It, it simply, food takes 80% of our energy yeah. to digest, process, and eliminate. So it can't be a, food, a fuel. That's like saying, uh, I'm driving my Prius, and I'm braking so hard that my battery's full. Yeah, yeah. So what happens for for... There, there's so I've been studying this implicitly like there's a period of time in which something happens in the world that to you can process that something and then come back with a reaction and, and it's based upon like if you get if you're really really eat a lot and you're full you're heavy somebody says like oh man it's like no if you're really really worn out in your body you're really stressed out and tired yet you're very slow to understand to react like if somebody gets up and they're super stressed or super tired they lose their chance at first they become hyper responsive because if they're tired um because uh they'll go into an adrenaline state to try and feed them but so if you take away what it is is our brain processes information so it takes all the inputs from the world processes it so that it can connect with uh, an emotion which is like a desire to do something or to respond or whatever. And that emotion then goes to a narrative on how to feel it out. So when you, when we're fasting, um, we are taking that 80% of that processing time and it goes away. So now you've got a hundred percent of your processor back. And the other part too is um, what I've been finding. Cause I, cause I, I hadn't fasted until 2020 ever, you know, my sister has been fasting since the seventies, you know? And so, and she's been trying to get me a fast and I'm like, that's stupid. Yeah, you need protein, yeah, yeah. you need this, you need this. And now, now I hear I am my sister who raised me, I'm eating crow all the time. She's like, oh, you're fasting again. I'm like, yeah, I'm fasting again. Okay. She's like, oh, good. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 uh, so that 80% of the processor comes back. Um, I can, there's not much delay. So if you take out the delays in my thought to my reaction and you, and you take that out systemically over like, three or four or five days, and all of a sudden you get faster and faster and faster, which to the outside world, it looks funny because one thing that we noticed, Jason, Cynthia and I, when we fasted is we fasted for six weeks, 44 days. We weren't aware of it, but people that come into our environment, because for us, we're just processing the, the body. Uh -huh. The body doesn't tell you that you're doing something more efficiently. It just tells you if it's not and so as you efficient. Can, so you yeah, because yeah. if it's more efficient, it doesn't even need to notify you. It's like, it just does it. Yeah. So we, we, during our 44 day fast, we stopped talking. So we were completely cast. Yeah. 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 We're, and, 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 and man, Binder, um, who was our cinematographer for a couple of years, he came and lived with us and he goes, Hey, listen, I'm, I just got to tell you, it's really uncomfortable. And they're like, what you guys, you know, like I've been here for like two days. You have said like four words to each other. And so he's, because most people use 
what people say and their language and all that to develop a sense of who uh, what that person is doing because yeah. if you if somebody comes up and they they look a little frustrated you might say hey are you you doing okay well that's because the nervous system is trying to get more input to evaluate the feeling that it has yeah the job of the brain is to explain the sensations and feeling in the body that's it it doesn't do anything else and so if we we're if we're if i'm if i'm fasted here's what what i'll notice is like uh <laughs> cynthia if she's going to criticize me her little finger twitches and before she even knows like I'm, I'm fasted she's not i can see it and i'm like stop it don't 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 go there and before she's in she goes what and i realized i have to let her have the thought first and but then i can say hey right. Yeah. You, I know you're going to come up with something, but I have to wait for her eyes to catch, you know, the realization. And I can see that all happen in real time. I was going to say, I was going to say, what, what has been your experience too with like, clearly you're able to create more potent things because you're a fit more efficient and you're more, you know, in tune and you're more like open essentially, you know, you're not, there's not highways that are blocked. There's no detours. It's, you know, it's real tor toroidal field happening very instantaneous because you're a clear you're clear you know what i mean yeah so we um as a matter of fact i'm going to talk to aisha a little bit after we're done yeah um because she's on here uh and she's fasting with a whole group of people in our in our community yeah. so it's it, it all comes down at the end is as mystic as we want to make it there is we are in a fluid adaptive biological computing system. That system has rules in which it operates in the third dimension. I'm not even pretending that we, that we have full access to it because we don't, we don't have full access to the, the abilities, but, but there are still logical rules in which we operate within, with, within each state of awareness. And that state of awareness that we're in, like, like, you know, you hear people saying, you know, I'm raising my frequency, I'm lowering my frequency. All those free states of awareness, all those frequencies are states yeah. of awareness. And they kind of go like Dr. Hawkins would say in bands. But yeah. what, what I realized is that the only way, I, the only reason I would be measuring it in bands is because I'm limited. If I was stepping outside of it, I don't even think of it that way. I don't think of somebody's frequency if, if, if I'm completely present in my body, because that's a judgment and I don't like to put judgment on people. Yeah. So fasting has been a, has been a really interesting one for me. Um, now today, like if you look at my body, I'm four days in my fast. It, it looks the same as I did four days ago. Yeah. Like my body has gotten to the point where there's not more left to get rid of. So when I fast, it's hard to tell the difference, but I normally fast. Here's one thing I found chronic issues in my body. So when the, the organ is here, right? So you have your liver here. Well, that liver, or let's say large intestine right through here, that has a big pathway down here and a big one up here and all the way through here. So when the large intestine is active, it's pulling power. How does it get power? movement so so in other words those tension lines these power lines this meridian here and this one all the way down here and all the way back up on the other side and all the way down the lake is slightly in tension because it's providing power to the organ so when you take away the organs function then the organ doesn't need the power guess what you get more, more less restriction yeah. so that's why the third day of a fast all of a sudden my fascia i'd be like stuck here and all of a sudden it'd be like yeah because it's it's a it's been it's just constantly like eating up any possible things that no longer it need yeah that's so interesting yeah yeah isn't that it, it it's it's been a learning because i all these things all these ancient practices they have a belief system around yeah. them and i've found them to be true within the belief system yeah. but i've found that the belief system doesn't fully explain explain the experience yeah. like the 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 big one everybody i got my kundalini yeah. rising and i'm like yeah if you are if you're still stuck in your muscle skeletal um muscle skeletal body yeah. and hormonally driven under stress a lot that kundalini rising is like whoa euphoria 
But yeah. what if you're just there all the time? Yeah. And it, yeah. and it doesn't take this energy euphoria. You're just there. Another another way to look at it too is is um, so we did brain scans during when I met you. We were doing brain scans. Yeah. And we had brain scans, performance testing, sleep study. We had a team come in and hook up equipment to us for like all, two sessions of about a total of four weeks, literally day and night, you know, testing and testing. My brain was 100% gamma, no theta, beta, alpha. And that would be a brain that was on like 10 milligram or 10 grams of mushroom. Yeah, and even yeah. then, you still got a little yeah, bit of it. Yeah. So, so this is what I've, I found is that when we do the fascia maneuvers, we remove this restriction, <clears throat> we get out of the hormonally trapped body, yeah. then the body starts to heal because hormones take almost, it, between waste management and hormones, that's your 80% of your energy because yeah. the food is firing hormones in order to process. And then the other one is waste management. You take all of that away, your body just changes. Yeah. It's that's so it's it's like you operate from the level you're willing to perceive from. Like you you can't and once you you go beyond whatever like Kundalini rising, now that perception is no longer real. Now you can be like it's like an awakened state. A monk doesn't need to reach an awakened state because they're living from the awakened. Correct. You know what I mean? They're yeah. not like oh I'm, I'm 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 my soul is awakened. I they're like I haven't met many people um, in my life actually virtually none um that live in that state and i i know they can get to that state and they do and i watch them but yeah. living in that state because as soon as i take my stand up take my first step if i have to use adrenaline to make that step if i have a restriction so if i pull my shirt and i stand up i have to use force adrenaline to move against them as soon as i use adrenaline to move against uh, to move against nature then my body comes out of whatever that enlightened state is. That's why the fascial maneuvers seem, well, this is, sorry, this is my current belief. And I am, I'm gonna say right here again, I'm willing to accept that my narrative, I, I'm willing to accept I know nothing, and I'm willing to accept that everything I'm saying is just a better way of explaining something I don't know. Because yeah. the way I explain it tends to answer all the reasons why our bodies are changing and why we have this, this crazy yeah. life right now. But it, but, who knows? I, every time I, th I say this is the way it is with the body and fascia, I get a, I get a hard smack in the ass saying, oh, yeah, you thought so? Well, let me give you another view. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's just, that's the discovery process. And that's why I appreciate it because you're willing to even go on the journey of peel back the curtain, oh, this is what it is. And then once you really are in it, now you're like, okay, that's what I thought it was. That's not really what it is. And you're keep, you just keep swimming deeper in the ocean. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're not saying this is the only ocean in the world and this ocean is the ocean that will heal you. And this is, no, you just keep going. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think of the architecture, how we operate in society. Um, if we have a knowledge base and we, we come to a resting point, this is my knowledge. Most people don't go much farther from that. They have, they have a, a high learning curve up to a, a platform of knowledge and experience in which they share with people. And then mm -hmm. from there, this could Same. be like 10 years, but then from there, the next 30 years, it only goes to here. And it's because people want to have a consistency and it's their platform. Their platform is based on these theories of the human experience. Yeah. And my platform personally is based on, I have no flipping idea and I'm going to keep exploring and I'm going to share with you every moment, which isn't biohacking. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 human hacking yeah it's not even hacking it's basically it's human understanding yeah understanding sorry yeah. understanding yeah it's, it's it's like you're enhancing you're enhancing the human life experience in the ways that you found to be to work you know what i mean it's like it's it's and that's why it's almost hard because it's like if something works do you do you really need to explain it well yes well, but it's you know what i mean and that's the world we're living in where everything yeah. has to be explained to justify science, which is a practice. Okay, that's, you know? see, this, this is that science is a religion. Um, and, and it's hard to get out of a religion because it has yeah. dogma. And yeah. the job of science is to, they say, is to, is to prove you wrong. And I'm like, no, the job of science is to explore, record a result, and share it with others. Yeah. It's, and then repeat it. And, and then when you're done with that, you do it again somewhere else. Yeah.
you know, so we, and today um, you can have, you have a, like, like our whole platform is the body is completely not the way we were told it is. Like our bones are not structured. There is no way that I can take any clinician or scientist in a minute and demonstrate with a couple simple movements that the bone isn't structured. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you, yeah, you, all, all, your, all the science in our body is based on this belief system of, because we're told this is how it's constructed. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. And what happens when like people who are physical therapists, right, do a fashion maneuver? Or, you know, there's you know, a, it, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, we had, if you go back when it first re launched, there were, and for those of you physical therapists and chiropractors who are out there who are listening to this, um, thank you for doing what you did because you started implementing it with your patients. Yeah. And, and, then, and then because it doesn't mesh with the way you learn the body, you just said it worked and you wanted to use it. And that's, that's really helped, that's caring. Because I'm not gonna do it because it's not like this. Uh, no, sorry, that's not caring. So, so I, I, years ago, it was, it was very few. And we initially came out to try to talk to practitioners, but they, there was not a platform for them to hear it. They didn't have a desire to hear it. So what we did is we released it to the public free, and that's when you yeah, met us. Yeah. And we started sharing it with people. And every practitioner would know this story. They'll have 10 or 15 or 20 patients, which they can't help, which they, they see all the time. They come back. It's like, I had it too. I was like, I don't even want to charge yeah. you, man. <laughs> Here, I'll help you. I had, I had patients that it's just like, listen, I'm going to keep helping you because I don't know the answer and I don't know anybody else does. So I'm going to do the best I can. Yeah. And, and those, those patients found us because of the, the need and they got better on their own and they went back to their practitioners. So that's why we have hundreds of thousands of practitioners around the world following, listening, implementing. Ah, See what you're saying the person so it's like somebody was able to observe i don't know what to do i can't they come back better said look this is what i did use this now they're like oh okay well i was able to watch them not get better under my own practice yeah and then they returned better on their own and now they're telling me this is what i did now it's a choice for that person to say will i implement and use these things that clearly right. worked that's where free will comes in and you know, some practitioners are like, nope, they'll send me letters and they'll, like, this is all bullshit. There's no basis in science. And we actually have science, yeah. but people can ar argue with science all day long. Science is completely, you can argue, create statistics, whatever. Yeah. But what you can't argue with is results because yeah. when science looks to understand itself, it goes out and does trials with people. Yeah. Those results are what we have now in the millions around the world. Yeah. And, and so now science has the uh, awesome ability to come in and start to explain why it's happening instead of us having to explain that yeah. it works. Yeah. And so it's like do the work and let other people reaffirm the work that is done instead of trying to prove, look, it's working, it's working. It's like you know it's working so you don't have to go and create your own validity studies to prove that it's like you, if we're watching. Hey, we get, we get 400 testimonials a day from and more sometimes up to a thousand and there a lot of them are from medical practitioners now yeah so yeah we we have we have the largest uh human study i think ever done because when because we we turned everybody into citizen scientists we said hey if you got a rash video it show us and then put do it, it up. And if it goes away <laughs> what did you do so we've turned we've turned millions of people into uh experiment test and report to other people. So this is, as far as I know, the largest uh, c contiguous base of people in the world exercising anything on the human body. It's larger than all of medicine combined right now. Yeah, you did it. You did it. You've done a great job because it's not a, if there's no one size fits all. There's not a, oh, do this only. Do, it, you know what it, I mean? It, it, believe me, Jason has been fundamental in helping me get there. Yeah. Because I wanted things I wanted, I wanted to like a hundred percent this, hundred percent that. And, and the language is because I was always pushing against a uh, institution that said, you know, you're wrong or that's not the way it is. So I was always pushing. Uh, so I had the language of force. Uh, you're using resistance to get. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and now, you know, over the last couple of years, 
you've seen me change. Whereas, whereas I don't have the resistance anymore. I'm not trying to prove anything yeah. anymore because I mean, partly because it works and it, we have the proof in the millions, Yeah. but we got there because, uh, because we stopped trying to prove it. We changed our language. We made it more inclusive. Yeah. And we also, it's in the greatest part about it is, you know, even for you with what you're doing, you, you're adding breath to it. You're, yeah. you're changing a ways and then you're going to develop a whole practice of yeah. helping based upon yeah. this. And then when, when you do this, you create your own program and guess what we do? We come in with a big media engine and we say, you're, we want to support you. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's super cool. It's, it's, it's like, I, I want to tell you this to your, to your face because you're influencing the way I approach the, 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 the message to the world because I'm watching, I've watched you guys start, you know what I mean? Not start, but like, yeah, well, you I, watch I, the start. I mean, you, when we first went online, you were there. Yeah. So, so it's like, and then it's like, what they're doing is working. They're, they're getting people. It's people focused. Power is in the people, not the, Oh, look at this marketing. Look at it. Like those are cool. Those work, but it's, you're, you're getting to the people and you're giving them solutions and saying, here, what do you want to do with it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I just want to make your choice. Yeah. Like, like I, I get a lot of questions and if you're out here listening to this, please don't invite me to a factual forum or discussion with a bunch of scientists and practitioners. I turn them all down. I am, if I'm going to spend my time, I'm going to spend my time with all of yeah. you helping each other, helping yourself. That's where my time, I'm not going to sit there with talking heads and argue anymore. So we don't even, we don't, I mean, we have a working definition of fascia. We haven't even changed it in two years, even though that we believe a whole new way, but because it, it's irrelevant, man, mm -hmm. we'll be arguing over bits and bites for the rest of the, for the rest yeah. of humanity's yeah. time. Yeah. So because I know the 28 day reset and new app is available. Walk us through the process from go on the website, download the app. How do I, I don't know. Anything, okay. Right? So, so we, so we we're converting everything from mighty networks where you started into the, the new app and the new app, why we're doing that is it, it has the features to allow a, a proper community to function this because it's a big change. You, like it's, you don't want to take a hundred thousand or 80,000 people, move them. Yeah. But it's worth it because it, it will facilitate more communication and more sharing and more mm -hmm. helping. So uh, right now uh, you go, uh, we have a 28 day global reset. Um, people can register. It's going to happen every two weeks, global reset. So they can register for the global reset um, and on up to the fourth, which is two more days. And, um, and then they started day one, three and seven day. Now they go to our website to do it. And in there each day, it tells you what to do. And it's super simple. Yeah. And also it's like, instead of an hour long podcast, it's like five minute podcast, yeah. 10 minutes. It's right to the point with all kinds of new content. So people can go in and then they register, they do the, the, the movements and everything for a day. It takes like 30, 40 minutes max. Um, and uh, they do the movements every day. It's more movement focused. And then on top of that, what we've done now is we have a team of coaches and facilitators where every day of the week, there is a class you can go to online for 28 day reset. You can ask questions and you, and also, um, it's, it helps with the, uh, with uh, people who have emotional release or have questions about it. Um, there's a facilitator and a coach in each one of those classes and they're happen every day. They're free of charge. And then once a week, uh, us, me and Jason, Cynthia and Aisha um, and team will be doing a class and answering questions for the first one once a week. So take So we're going on the journey with you. And as a matter of fact, this is Jason's masterpiece. So I haven't even looked at it. I am opening it up like everybody else is. I know the components. Yeah. I know what it, I know the yeah. theme yeah, of yeah. it, but I'm just excited to open this up as everybody else. I did my day one. I'm doing my day two when I get off here. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's because I, I once again started too, and I just want it to be super clear because people pan, people panic when they can't figure things out when they're like, Oh, it's starting. How do I get it? You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, dude, just go to enroll. You click enroll. Now you click one of the three options. Um, you plug in all your information, then you download the circle app. It's a, basically a Facebook type, you know what I mean? Build out community. Yeah. And you just go to fashion maneuvers, start with day one. Yeah. You do day one, you do day three, you do day three, you do day seven. And it's just like, 
but you can't get to it until you unlock finishing day one. So I, yeah. I've went through, the, I've, I've figured, I figured it out, but I just want people that are listening to say, I don't know how to do it. What do I need to, you know what I mean? It's like, just calm down, take a deep breath. It's okay to not know everything. Just enroll, go through the process. It's not, it's not as scary and as complicated as we might perceive it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, thank you for pointing that out. Um, we are going to be, um, uh, have, uh, we're in the process of getting it branded in the app store. So you can download, download a human garage app. We do it in this circle. So you download a new app, mm -hmm. but it's very similar to money networks. If you've noticed it has, yeah. but it's yeah. way easier. Like you yeah. can, you can communicate clear. easier, it's get more efficient. Clear. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. So. Oh, I, oh, and I, I just said, yeah, which is right. Jason created a, an outline um, so that he explains, answers all the questions, how, why, when it works. And if people miss the fourth, that's okay. Um, you, you sign up, the next one is on the 15th. And then the next one is on the, is on the first. So on the first and 15th of every month, there is a new 28 day reset starting. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's finish with one one closing breath work and that's a it's a great start to the new year. Okay. All right, so this one, hmm. I like I like the tree and a plant. So what we're gonna do when we inhale, I want you to imagine growing tall, growing tall like a tree. When you exhale, I want you to stay tall. So try to basically what what's gonna happen is your body naturally wants to like compress back yeah. down. But just keep staying tall and every inhale try to grow tall every exhale maintain so it's like go yeah. higher maintain go higher maintain go higher maintain then exhale decompress okay we'll do just three breaths every breath try to grow tall as you can hands by your side stand up tall in three two one inhale real tall exhale stay tall taller Stay tall. Best one. Inhale tall. Exhale. Stay tall. And last one, let go. Inhale tall. And release. Whoa. It's so simple and so powerful, Isaiah. That's it. So thank you, Gary. Happy New Year. Happy, happy thank you for being happy part Tuesday. of our community for years. Thank you for doing what you're doing with Fashion yeah. Maneuvers, expanding breath consciousness around the world. We really appreciate you. You too. Much love. Much love. Peace.